Hi, I'm Nick. I'm the PC builder here at Thermaltake Australia. Today, I'll be explaining how to bend tubing for a water-cooled build. There are three main types of tubing you can use for a water-cooled build. The first is soft tubing. This is probably the easiest tube to use as you don't have to worry about bending it and you can cut it down easily with a pair of scissors. Next is rigid tubing, coming in both PETG and acrylic. This type of tubing uses different fittings than soft tubing. For today's how-to though, we will be using PETG. This is the most commonly used tubing in water cooling today and bends at lower temperatures, so you don't have to heat it for too long. It is also durable enough to smash it against the edge of a table if you wanted to. Acrylic is quite brittle and it would shatter. You can also cut this using a rotary cutter. Here at Thermaltake, we have two different lengths of PETG tubing available, one meter and 500 millimeters. The size of your case and the layout of parts will determine the size you should pick, so a bigger case will usually need bigger tubes. There is also an array of tools that you will use when bending tubes. The first is a silicon bending rod. This is a vital tool when tube bending. You insert this inside the tube you want to bend before heating it. If you don't do this, the tube will pinch shut and be unusable. The second tool is the reaming tool. This has two sides. One is used to shave the edge of the tubing down to a 45 degree angle. The other side is used to sand down all the plastic on the edges after cutting the tubing. There is also a rotary cutter, which is a small device used specifically to cut PETG tubing. Next is your heat gun, another vital tool in tube bending. This is used to heat up the tubing until it becomes malleable enough to bend. Next, we have mandrels. These are designed to hold your tubing and will give you a consistent bend every time. They can be screwed down onto a workbench for ease of use and they are available in four different angles. You can also use gloves if you are concerned about the heat hurting your hands. I personally don't really think it's necessary because you're not getting your hands all that close to the nozzle of the heat gun anyway. Now, onto the process of bending tubing. Firstly, you insert the silicon bending rod into your tube. Then start to heat up your heat gun. PETG tubing begins to get malleable at about 62 degrees Celsius and melts at 260 degrees. Messing around with different temperatures and moving the tube further or closer is a great way to figure out the best temperature for you. Hold the tubing over the heat, not too close, but not too far away. Twist the tube around constantly to make sure all the tube is heated equally. Also ensure you're heating up a significant section of the tube. If you only heat up a small section, when you go to bend it, there might be a risk of kinking because there is not enough area for the tube to bend around. The best way to determine how much to heat up is decide where you want your bend to be and then ensure you're heating up around 10 to 15 centimeters on either side of that. You can't really heat up too much of the tube, but you can definitely heat up too little. You want to hold it over the heat until it starts feeling malleable enough to bend. It may take around two minutes depending on how hot the heat gun is. As it gets softer, gradually start bending the tube and work slowly over the heat until you're confident it feels malleable enough to bend fully. If you're bending with a mandrel, just hold it along the edge of the mandrel with the angle that you want. Hold it there until it cools. Ensure you heat up a little more of the tube though when bending with a mandrel, as they can be quite finicky. I don't tend to use mandrels and prefer to bend freehand, as I find it provides better results. The process is basically the same however. You just make the bend yourself, and again, hold it until it cools. To cut the edges off the tube, grab your rotary cutter. Work slowly. PETG is rigid, but still quite pliable. If you close the cutter all the way, you will end up squashing the tube. So ensure the blade is just touching the tubing and then do one rotation. Twist the handle to extend the blade and do another rotation. By going slowly and taking your time, you won't damage your tube and will be left with a cleaner cut. Next, tidy up the edges of the tubing with the reaming tool. Don't worry about trying to give PTG tubing the 45 degree angle, as I find the tool likes to grab the tube and leave you with a slightly jagged edge. To clean the inside of the tube, place the reaming tool at the end of the tube and turn like you would sharpening a pencil. Tap out the excess and you will have a clean cut. If you skip this step, there is a risk of the small bits of tubing getting into your loop and getting stuck somewhere. If you don't have a reaming tool, sandpaper can also work. And now, you have just completed a bend. 
Now, here are some quick examples of what not to do. In this example, I'm only heating up a small area of the tube, and as you can see, it kinks very badly. You can technically still use this, but it will look really bad. This example shows you what will happen if you don't use a silicon insert. As you can see, the tube is basically unusable now. Rigid tubing will always need an insert. The final example showcases what will happen if you overheat your tubing. As you can see, you basically melt your tubing and it bubbles up. You technically can still use it if you're really desperate though, but I don't recommend it. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one.